years I worked for Princess Diana, she mm. didn't come into the royal family to be a princess. She came in to be queen. So uh, I will put in a word for my old boss. I still feel a great loyalty to her. And there will be a part of me today that is uh, lamenting the fact that she is not here. Uh, except I suspect she probably is in one form or another. Mm. Um, you could even perhaps imagine that she would have been here. I mean, Andrew Parker Bowles is going to be yeah. in the congregation. Perhaps we'd have seen uh, her 60-something-year-old Princess Diana as the most glamorous granny in the place. <laughs> yeah, indeed. It's interesting, it's interesting what you say there, because some thought, of course, famously, that Camilla would never be queen, and, and here she is. She will be. The reason people thought that was because that's what they were told. If you look at the history of Camilla's royal career, it has been accompanied at every step by solemn statements from Buckingham Palace that I wrote from Dan, she was just a friend, she's a very good friend. Okay, she's a girlfriend, but she will never be more than that because Charles and Diana will never divorce. And when they divorced, uh, Charles was never going to remarry, and if he remarried, then Camilla was never going to be anything more than just quietly behind the scenes supporting her man. And then if he became king, she was going to be princess consort. Mm. And now he's become king, she was going to be princess, no, queen consort. Yeah. And now, lo and behold, she's queen. So if there is confusion about Camilla's status in the king's life, in the national life, it's because people in Buckingham Palace, for reasons we can speculate on, didn't want to tell us. Mm. Just a final thought from you as well. It's so fascinating to speak to you, Patrick. What, what will King Charles do to the monarchy and for the monarchy? Well, that is a fascinating question because all, his, all the time he's been waiting to be king, he has cast himself as a modernizer, mm. as the new broom, uh, counterpoint to the rather Victorian fusty atmosphere of, of old Buckingham Palace. Mm. Um, I suspect having got there at this late stage in his own life, the modernization plans may have been adapted a bit because I think until you're in the job, you don't know what you need to make it happen the way you want. He'll, we'll, he'll definitely leave his own mark on it. He already is. But part of the, the magic of the monarchy is that it doesn't change. It's not there to change. It's not there to be a leader in thought or culture or um, a, any other field. It's there to be the monarchy, to be yeah. this unchanging focus of national unity. And I hope he doesn't mess with that. Patrick, really fascinating to hear from you. And we'll hear from you throughout the day on Times Radio as well. It's great to see you. Thank you. Uh, Patrick Jefferson, the former private secretary and equerry to Diana, Princess of Wales.